Welcome to my review and thoughts on the 1976 movie The Message, also known as Muhammad Messenger of God. Now, this is going to be a video on the English language version, which was directed at the same time by the same, direct, same director, not dubbed later. I have not watched the Arabic version as I do not speak the language, and I have not had access to that version. So, not gonna pretend like I knew very long ago that, I'm gonna see if I can pronounce this right, the Hijra is the Islamic New Year. I knew that their New Year is different from like the Christian, but anyway, yes, I, if, unless I have been misled by Google and Wikipedia, this video is on the Islamic New Year, and yeah, I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie ad that I absolutely love. There, I, I might make jokes in this video, but they won't be at the expense of Islam or Muslims, and I will get into a number of serious topics. Now, if you're looking for a view that's like, oh, the movie doesn't really hold up, it's been outdone by litter movies because that it's not that much fun to watch today, and or it's inaccurate so it sucks, whether you agree with those assessments or not, this is not that review. And, yeah, so, full disclosure, I am an atheist. I do not believe any religion to be accurate. I'm not trying to convert or deconvert anyone. This video will be free of negative commentary on religion, especially Islam, and I will be respectful of it. I will not be saying peace be upon him, as I have been informed. It is not offensive for non-Muslims to omit that. But Christianity is widely accepted here in the West, and there's still a lot of people here who think that Islam is inherently more violent, more misogynist, less humane than Christianity. These ideas are clearly incorrect. In fact, it's the other way around. See, if you read the words in the Quran, some of them in the IMDb memorial quotes, it's much better than early Christianity. I'm not saying it's completely fair to compare since they were formed hundreds of years and over a thousand kilometers apart. I'm saying, I'm saying this because a lot of Christians think that it's the other way around when a lot of the positives of Christianity came much later than the initial origin of the faith, and or look at the actions of Muslims in the West, keeping in mind the Christians in the Middle East are also harsher than those of the West. It comes with living in a dictatorship with no hope of improvement, where the religion is misused to control the populace. In America, you're more likely to be the victim of a white Christian terrorist than an Islamic one. I will link to a video in the description box titled Moderate Muslims and Terror Attacks by Sean that points out that Muslims do criticize radical terrorist acts. It's just ignored by a lot of people whose narratives it doesn't fit. I hope through this video to combat these wrong notions and help spread more empathy for Islam. If you want something more current that's also positive about Islam, I highly recommend Disney Plus's Ms. Marvel miniseries. And if you, like myself, love the Ten Commandments, the 1956 Charlton Heston version, and Ben-Hur, 1959, the Charlton Heston version, definitely give this movie a chance. And if you are a Muslim, this movie does not depict Muhammad. He's never seen nor heard. There are camera shots from his POV, and I personally completely disagree with those who say it's difficult to adjust to. I found it to be very... Like, I... I I get that you would think that, but I personally found it was very, very easy to, to, yeah. It was made by a Muslim for an audience, including Muslims. It was not made, you know, the, they were very careful about not being disrespectful. And, yeah, you know, the, the... Yeah, there's a great, some, some Wikipedia that's, so yeah, the movie chronicles the life and times of the Islamic prophet Muhammad through the perspective of his uncle, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, and adopted son, Zaid ibn Haritha. And those are the, you know, some of the most prominent characters. So, you know, obviously, you know, it, as a, a movie like this does need to have a one or more prominent characters that can be sort of the face of Islam, the the you know the person that you look to and listen to. You know, it wouldn't work if there were no characters that you could see and hear that were arguing for Islam. 
but that's how they got around not depicting uh, Muhammad, which, yeah, I, I doubt anyone watching this video don't already know that that's considered blasphemous. Now, the, let's see, right, and Mustafa Akkad considered creating a film about Muhammad, the birth of Islam, back in 1967. A film script written by H.A.L. Craig was approved in its entirety by Tafik al-Hakim, a scholar at al Azhar University. Uh, let's see, right, however, the film's approval was revoked and referred to as an insult to Islam. Ahmed Asmad abdel Makid and Mo Wafak Alaf, the permanent representatives to the United Nations for Egypt and Syria, praised the film for its depiction of Islam. While creating the message, director Akkad, who was Muslim, consulted Islamic clerics in a thorough attempt to be respectful towards Islam and its views on portraying Muhammad. Now, uh, then it says, it was rejected by the Muslim World League in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, but it does say citation needed, so I don't know how much, you know, yeah, make of that what you will. And, uh, right, and, and Rotten, there's a great Rotten Tomatoes quote, in accordance with Islamic law, director Mustafa's, Mustafa Akkad's bio pick of Muhammad never actually depicts the prophet himself, but rather outlines his story through the lives of certain cardinal figures in his life. Uh, Abu Sufyan, Michael Ansara, the leader of Mecca, Muhammad's uncle Hamza, Anthony Quinn, and others chronicle the persecution of the earliest Muslims. And let's see, yeah, some of the, yes. Um... Right, and, and some critic quotes. With soft, sad music and powerful camera work, we felt the presence of Muhammad without having to see him. And I think that was absolutely brilliant. Just, yeah, in incredible uh, job on that. They show the Prophet's message without showing Muhammad himself in order to illustrate it through the society of that time and influence that that message had on people. The film illustrates the birth of early Islam at the time when Kaaba was still a house of pagan gods. Now, and, and you know, I think it also does bear mentioning the reason Muslims do not want Muhammad depicted is that it would turn him into an idol, which is something that he specifically fought against other religions doing. And let's be honest, a lot of conservative Christians do turn Christianity into idol worship. They end up feeling like they're better people because they have a cross around their neck or a cross on the wall in their house than people who actually treat better, like progressives who do not idol worship. And, you know, if you're watching this video and you're not Muslim, the movie doesn't teach hating non-Muslims. It features positive depictions of Christians. The people that come out looking bad are the polytheistic pre-Islamic Arabs, and I'm not sure that I would say that they came out looking as bad as the Egyptians in the Ten Commandments. And and the movie doesn't pretend like they're just these evil mustache twirling villains. You understand their point of view. Uh, you know, it's it's said very early on, Muhammad suggests there is only one God, and he cannot be seen. Whereas these polytheistic pre-Islamic Arabs believed that there were many gods, hundreds of them, and that in order to, you know, yeah, they were in favor of idol worship. They believed that you, you know, and for some of them, that was basically business. You know, they were like, why would anyone come to Mecca where we have hundreds of gods if they think that they can you know, that the God is just as happy with them staying home and worshipping. You know, it, yeah, basically, you know, like, like so many things throughout history, it was powerful people terrified of losing their power. And that drove them to doing incredibly evil things. Let's see, and, right, and the, the yeah, the movie doesn't you know, suggest that non-Muslims are fundamentally wrong. Merely, it offers the points of view of Muhammad, explains how and why Islam won over hearts, in addition to the battles they had to fight because they were persecuted. The movie is, in fact, explicitly against Muslims using violence in any situation other than self-defense. And there's actually, at one point, they specifically say, 
don't let them provoke you. Don't let them bait you into violence. If you watch this and it affects you emotionally, you're less likely to engage in violence than if not. I do recommend following it up with reading something, but not something biased against Islam, to get more information. Now, you know, the, 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 one of the, um, the first time I watched this, it was actually very soon after I learned the early history of Islam in school where I was fortunate enough to have a teacher who was actually himself Muslim and yeah like he he did a great job clearing up a lot of lies and misconceptions that I had been taught when I was younger you know I'm Danish and like technically nobody here is like forced to believe in Christianity but you know, certainly when I was a child, I think it may have gotten better, but I've been fortunate enough to not have to step inside a school for, I guess, about 10 years by now, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, almost everything I've learned, I've learned outside of school. I've School has not done very much to, to help give me an education, mostly because when I was in school, there was a very narrow idea of how to teach and I did not fit that. So, the, you know, most of my school years were teachers trying desperately to fit a square peg into a round hole and taking their frustrations out on me instead of the system that was broken. Anyway, officially, the, the idea is that here in Denmark, you know, we don't, you're not, told to believe in Christianity. You're just told the, you know, some, some facts about Christianity. But in practice, when I was in, you know, in school, when I was a kid, I was taught really ridiculous things about, you know, Islam and, and Muslims. And yeah, you know, when, when I took history as, you know, a teenager, a lot of that was cleared up in part because the, the teacher and also you know, this teacher, like, hypothetically, if he wanted, I'm sure he could have, like, told us that we had to, uh, you know, I don't know, this, that, and the other thing that supported uh, Islam, but he never did. Like, I, I talked with the others, none of them, I, I, at no point did I hear or see any indication that he put pressure on, like, most of us were either atheists or Christians, you know, the the he didn't pressure us into it he just told us the truth about early islam and he did also acknowledge that not all present day muslims live up to the ideals that muhammad set forth now i've only been able to read one review from this movie from its initial release but sadly expectedly it's very hostile towards islam and actually it it says oh this is an invasion of hollywood because racist rhetoric has sadly not changed that much in the decades since. One movie that isn't even hostile towards Christians by non-Christians is an invasion? Like, think about how ridiculous, how insecure you have to be to freak out like that over one movie. Like, if there is something in this movie that is actually like really really hostile to Christianity please put it in the comments because I must have missed it 100% each of my viewings because I don't I don't see it there's there's one major character who is explicitly Christian and the fact that he's Christian is underlined as he is he is just and he you know the the yeah like the the it actually, like, if anything, like, if you watch this movie and you know, knew nothing about Islam or Christianity, you would come out thinking that Christianity and Islam basically, like, got along, you know, religious BFFs or something. Just, there, there's nothing in here that's like, but, yeah, you know, the, the, if, if, 
if you're used to having all the power, then the tiniest bit of equality will seem like, you know, you're being oppressed or something. Yeah, I butchered that quote. Now, let's see. And, yeah, so I, you know, I did some, some research before this where I noted that the first time Muhammad was depicted appears to be in 1911 in an Italian Christian movie that has a really hateful representation of Muhammad. And, you know, since this came out starting in the 2000s, including at least one before 9-11, especially in the early to mid-2000s, but also a few in the early to mid-2010s, there have been about, uh, let's see, yeah, f far more, 14 total movies about Muhammad than before, and many of them were informational or neutral. So it appears that this movie did help challenge the negative perception somewhat, and today positive depictions of Muslims are gradually becoming more mainstream. I already mentioned the 2022 Ms. Marvel, which was made by Disney, one of the biggest studios, not one known for taking big chances or being more inclusive than is that all mainstream. And... Let's see. So, so yes. Right. Uh, before I get into the the review, I want to briefly say I, I'm I'm really I, I really admire the the writers and actors for striking. I don't myself have a lot to. I, I don't. Basically, everything that I have to say is in is as already been said by Organized Chaos and YMS. So I'm just going to link to those videos in the description box. Now, right, so I start the video with a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers. You can mute and skip ahead and choose to even lower my index finger. As soon as I'm the review itself, please note the rest of the review will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. So, that brings us to the rating. Oh, that's right, this actually is rated PG. But the, the let's see, yeah, this was before the PG-13, so it was either going to get a PG or an R. Yeah, I, I can see why they didn't give it an R. I think I would probably... Yeah, like, if you're sure your kid can handle it, even if they're not, like, 13 years old yet... You know, maybe talk to them afterwards, because there is some very intense stuff in this movie. But yeah, like, they, they do a good job. Like, it could have gotten an R rating easily. And I think it was on purpose that the, you know, they made sure it wasn't too, like, yeah. Like, you know, the... the you know, let's see, mid to late 70s did have some very intense R-rated movies. So, yeah, it, it was a good idea to, to make this not that. And let's see. And I, you know, I, I really, I'm impressed with how well they tell the story, which does have violent events without getting really extreme with the violence but still getting across the the you know yeah how how like it was a very dangerous time and it was a like the conflict was like it it was a you know people did suffer so yeah, you know, like the the um, some some movies made today on a PG-13 rating, you know, they might feature seemingly a lot of violence, but actually you know, re um, because of how they show how they choose to show certain things, it will come off as not as as almost making violence seem not that, like, you know, I, I love The Dark Knight Rises, but the fact that 
basically, you know, I, I, I believe it was the abridged script on the editingroom.com that pointed out, the, the editing room website, that pointed out bullets apparently just make you really sleepy in that movie. And, yeah, you know, it's it's legitimately ridiculous, and I'm really, really glad that this movie does show blood and have, like, you know, that's also something that, like, today, you know, movies that want to not, you know, get too intense for, like, certain audiences, they won't show suffering so much. You know, people, yeah, people die very quickly and very, you know, seemingly kind of painlessly, even from things that, like, if you know about that thing in real life, you know, no, that's not how that goes. And this movie, you know, it doesn't, like, dwell on it, doesn't spend forever on it, but it does make a note of the fact that people were tortured, uh, including for things that, like, it seems just completely irrational that anybody was tortured for, for things like that. Now, the... My first viewing of this was in 2009. If I had to guess, I think this is... Well, it has to be at least my third viewing. It might be my fourth. Uh, you know, it, it's not... Primarily because of its length. It's not a movie that I've returned to as many times as I've returned to other movies over the years. So, the... Yes, um, so the plot. This epic historical drama chronicles the life and times of Prophet Muhammad and serves as an introduction to early Islamic history. And, yeah, so the, you know, the, the genres are biography, drama, and history, and that does make a lot of sense. And, yeah, the technical aspects are very, very impressive. Um... Yeah, a lot of talent, skill, and enthusiasm on display. And... Yeah, so the... Let's see... Right, um, yeah, so I, I knew the story going in would say this is a quite accurate depiction of the events, and it's a perfect choice to not depict the prophet. The film's incredibly well done, and the plot is well written. Director Mustafa Akkad wanted to make the movie, so he contacted uh, um, H. A. L. Craig to uh, R. I. P. to write it, and yeah, you you can really tell that it was, you know, it's not that some studio head was like going through. Okay, what's what's popular today? What are the what are the papers say? okay, this thing is really popular, it's going to make a lot of money for a movie, whatever, hire someone, you know. No, this was a personal project, and Mustafa Akkad was willing to admit something that not all directors, you know, Mustafa Akkad, R.I.P., was one of those directors who was willing to admit, I'm not the right person to write this, you know. And, yeah, it's it's really, really great that... It did, yeah, and yeah, the excellent screenplay. Like it really, you know, it it feels in a lot of ways like a western movie. It, you know, you've got setup and payoff. the The story flows in a very natural way. You know, told in chronological order. You know, it was very much. You know, he knew the studio system. He understood what he could get away with making and yeah you know made something that was safe enough that American studios would let him make it and also respectful of Islam and so yeah whenever we imagine 
things that we'd like to be able to do when someone has treated us unfairly, it's easy to just settle for something that makes you feel better, even if it doesn't necessarily improve things. So I really appreciate that this is a movie that has the maturity to actually present a healthy alternative to the negative that it's criticizing. Uh, let's see... Yes, the... the um, yeah, uh, to, I'm, I'm going to talk some about the direction. So... Mustafa Akkad was a Syrian-born, you know, yeah, he, he directed this as well as, uh, I can't believe I'm, hold on, I'll have it momentarily. Other than this, he also directed the 1980 movie, The Lion of the Desert, which also starred Anthony Quinn, and yeah, I am going to be doing a video on that one as well. That one is also excellent. But yeah, um, he you know he directed two versions of this movie, one in American English, one in Arabic, and the movie The Lion of the Desert. And you know he had he had wanted to d direct more, but he is primarily known as the you know ex yeah executive producer of the Halloween movies from the very start, from the 1978 original up until his death in 2005. Now, I'm personally not fond of the sequels to Halloween other than the H40 trilogy, which being produced after his death, of course, Mustafa Akkad had nothing to do with, but I do think he did an amazing job on the original 1978 Halloween movie and to a slightly lesser extent, Season of the Witch, and I can certainly respect he gave the audiences what they wanted most of the time with these sequels, you know. Right, and um, I, I'm blanking on his... I, I believe his son took over um, the the Halloween uh, franchise after his death. I'm going to see if I can find his name real quick. Malik Akkad. Yes. Um, he continued producing, uh, you know, after... The, the death of his father. Oh, and he did start he he did start producing some of them before the death of his father. He was producer from 1995, so the curse, Halloween six. And yeah, he the the you know he's he's producer on the the H40 trilogy. Let's see. Oh huh. And Malik has written and directed and produced a movie that talks like a, a documentary that's about the production of this movie, which I can understand because it's a it is a fascinating. I'm not going to get into all of it, but there's some really it's it's wild the kind of stuff that happened as they were making, yeah. Um, I'd like to watch that. Uh, okay, it says here it's not out yet. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on it. Um, let's see. Now, right, and I just want to note, of all the white people I've met, a way higher percentage of them were a-holes compared to the percentage of a-holes among, among non-white immigrants. I've met couple dozen Muslims. Uh, my father used to teach them Danish and they're like some of the nicest and most patient giving people that that you'll ever meet. Like, you know, I was I was sitting there the the a bunch of times basically like Yeah, the the exact circumstances are not super important, but more you know, I was I was this little child. They knew I wasn't Muslim, and I was you know, like my father had to keep an eye on me, but there was a you know he also had to teach a class, so I would sit in the classroom, it often in a corner, and be reading like Donald Duck comic books, you know, and like over and over the the you know. Yeah, some of them came over to me and greeted me, and, you know, just incredibly polite. You know, they, like, they had nothing to gain from this. 
you know, it, like the the you know, my father was already polite to them. It's not like they were hoping, oh, you know, special treatment. If you're no, just you know, I'm sitting there, this you know, kid that they don't have any, you know, they just know that I'm the son of the teacher, and like it would, like hypothetically, it should be just as easy for them to just walk past me and not really do, you know. I, I wasn't trying to get their attention, you know, I was just sitting there quietly, but so many of them would walk up to me and, and be really, you know, very polite and sweet. Uh, like, I think I've had at least five or six, like, babysitters when I was a kid that were his students, you know, they just, yeah, incredibly sweet people. I'm not saying all Muslims are, but... I know a lot of people who act like no Muslims are, and that's just absurd. You know, I, I've, yeah. Let's see. Right, right. So the yeah, according to IMDb trivia, production stopped when the financiers withdrew their support, leaving cast and crew. You know, which was that that was a thing that Mustafa Akkad was very wary of, of course, because it's like a bunch of Americans gonna finance this movie that, uh, like, you know, that paints a positive picture of Islam. You know, like, 1976, you know, pre-9-11, but I want to say, I, uh, I have to admit, I forget, when was the Iran... Let's see. Yeah, I guess it was before the, the Iranian issues but you know yeah actually maybe at the time it was mostly just oh you know weren't they the guys whose ancestors were like fighting us in the crusades my that might have been the general american idea of what like a muslim was but yeah anyway they withdrew their support leaving cast and crew stranded for two weeks in morocco in a hotel with broken air conditioning they slept under wet towels Financing was eventually supplied by none other than Libyan leader Muammar al-Gaddafi. Please keep in mind that American Western war criminals have also sponsored media produced in the West. In the description box, I'll be linking to a video where the Cabernacle talks about that. Let's see... Right, and yeah, the movie has stunning imagery, presents and communicates its points rather well, and the entire production is very effective. And, yeah, so, some, some, yeah, some critic quotes, and I'm going to start by, this is, this is the top-rated IMDb user review. I am an Orthodox Christian, but I must acknowledge this masterpiece. Allegedly, the movie is historically precise, and if it really is, then there's no essential difference between Christianity and Islam. Trouble does not lie in the opposition of two religions. It lies in the existence of greedy, bloodthirsty politicians who incite religious fanaticism and abuse basically peaceful religions to accomplish their political and economic goals. Anyway, if you're not Muslim, you just have to put your prejudice aside, if you have any, and you'll enjoy this excellent piece of cinematography. And just, yeah, it, it's absolutely true and it's it's wonderful that's that's you know sadly you know that that review um actually I, hold on i will just double check before i put my foot in my mouth uh no yeah that review is from 2016 so no way did mustafa akkad himself uh, you know read that bef before his death but it is the kind of thing that helps prove, you know, he was right. This is the kind of thing that you can, you know, not every single misunderstood faith is something that you can necessarily get the masses to, like, look at and, and actually consider if it's maybe not as bad as they've always been told. But, yeah, like, um, Muslims, Christians, and Jews there's a lot of reason for them to get along and yeah you know it's yeah like the the reviewer wrote it's not the two religions that's the problem it's the people who incite religious fanaticism and yeah I, you know it's i'm i'm really really glad that uh, you know that there are a number of people who have come to realize that through this movie 
And right, so yes, back to critic quotes. It's obvious that no expense was spared to bring the messenger's message to the big screen with all the blood and thunder, color and pageantry a man like Muhammad deserves. A religious epic that Hollywood tries to do for Islam, what it did for Christianity. And I already mentioned that Charlton Heston's Ten Commandments is also really, really well made. That movie's preaching to the choir. This film does actually make a case for believing in Islam, pointing out its positive values. Overall, I can understand why a number of people prefer the Charlton Heston Ten Commandments to, to this movie, and it's not necessarily, like, based on what faith you, you subscribe to, but, you know, that one features more, like, very clear miracles. Moses, as played by Charlton Heston, is a major presence, and there are far more special effects than in this. And though, you know, yeah, some of them haven't as early aged the best, but like my heart stops when the water turns into blood and when the 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 sea is parted, you know, just amazing stuff. Like I know how they did it, you know, I've I've read about it. I know exactly what they how they did it. But just the, the special effect, the acting, the filming, and the editing just really sell it. And just, yeah. Now, let's see. Yes, so. The United States sinks deeper and deeper into conflicts in the Middle East. In the midst of the confusion, take a look at this unusual movie. Uh, let's see. Listen to what's being said. If the film moves the world towards peace with justice, it will do some good. Well made and quite engaging, even for non-Muslims, a highly ambitious film capturing the life of Muhammad. Due to the nature of the subject, Mustafa Khan had to thread his way between many restrictions. Not only did the film have to be accurate in its depiction of Muhammad, as anything short of this would be sacrilegious, but in order to reach a wider audience, it had to appeal to non-Muslims too. Furthermore, his main character could not be shown at all. Despite these requirements and limitations, Akkad ultimately made a fine movie, epic in scale, lavish in production, engaging in plot. It clocks in at a touch under three hours, but doesn't feel like it. It moves along so smoothly. Akkad gets around the inability to show Muhammad through some clever devices, often concentrating on his senior aides rather than the man himself, and when he does have him present, doing it from a first-person perspective. And let's see. as a person who does not know much about the history of Muhammad and Islam, quite edifying, good cinematography and battle scenes, decent performances too. It's interesting to see how this religion formed the director's decision not to show Muhammad. Uh, let's see. Yeah, um, I disagree with the following, but I'm uh, yeah. Some people have felt that it was hard as a viewer to connect with the film because. It doesn't show Muhammad. I don't know. I mean, I suppose if it's very new to you, I get. I don't know. Maybe I've just seen so many movies where a point of view shot is treated as just you know, it's not like it's that's just it's one of the tools in the the filmmaker's toolbox. Now, let's see. Authentic costumes, art direction of the Arab Peninsula of the 7th century. Never filmed battles and towns as described in historical books. Uh, critics in the 70s panned for being excessively reverential towards Islam's prophet, while films about Moses and Jesus from a Christian perspective earned rave reviews with exactly the same tone of breathless reverence born in neon campiness. No, this is actually a pretty good film, an old-timey religious epic in the fashion of the Ten Commandments, and what's more, it tells a story most viewers don't already know. And I would actually, you know, I can't understand, like, I I mentioned that the, the, the Charlton Heston, you know, Ten Commandments, that there's some similarities. I do acknowledge there's 20 years between the two movies. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not sure that there was a huge amount of religious epics being made in in the 70s. I am I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but certainly you know, the the two main Christian ones I know are the 
yeah, Ten Commandments from 56, Ben-Hur from 59. So, yeah, you know, there was some, some time in between. I did actually, I did consider, I do have it on, on DVD, the, the Ten Commandments, and yeah, I, I did consider putting it up behind me. I realize it's somewhat sparse back there. It's, you know, the, the message and then line of the desert, uh, you know, but it just felt wrong putting up the Ten Commandments considering that there's been so much hatred from conservative Christians who have absolutely no need to towards, uh, you know, Muslims. So, yeah. And I suppose I'm not 100% averse to the idea of at some point doing a video talking about the, the you know, Charlton Heston Ten Commandments. I'm just not sure YouTube needs more white guys talking about movies that promote Christianity. I, I'm not entirely sure that's... Well, I guess Judaism... Back when that was the same. It's, it's Old Testament, not New Testament. Anyway... Uh, let's see, and right, so, so yes, back to critic quotes. The only obstacle in its telling is the attempt not to show Muhammad or any of his main companions directly. In fact, they are almost completely absent, leaving the entirety of Islam's founding up to Anthony Quinn's Hamza, who historically played a very small role. That is, all of the important events are represented, and in a very, and in a movie way, but with yeah, okay, yeah this, it's all the wrong people doing... Yeah, I suppose. that's uh, And... Let's see... It's time for a remake of the message with a more accurate telling and actual portrayals of Muhammad's famous followers, but Mustafa Akkad's cautious first attempt is still a good film in its own right. I mean, I, I don't, honestly don't know enough. I mean, certainly showing Muhammad would still... Would, would pose the same problem today as it did back then. But I do acknowledge that, you know, the fact that, like, it actually doesn't... Like, you know, Muhammad had a family, and if you just watch this movie, you don't really get a sense of that at all. And I'm not... I'm honestly not 100% clear on the rules. I can imagine that there are some restrictions on how much you can show of Muhammad's family, but uh, yeah, and and certainly I do think that yeah, you know I'll I'll leave it at, at that. This is the only legitimate biopic of the Prophet, which for its con conscientiousness to the religion is a good film to watch because the director's heart was on his sleeve when making this film. You can tell. Uh, let's see. It, um, what makes it good is the amount of heart towards the subject matter, the depiction of Muhammad. Uh, let's see. Um, and right, the the um, yes, this story about Islam is a mirror of how the real Muslims are. They aren't bad people. They're naturally kind, mostly victims. If a few of them, like five percent. 50 or 60 mil from the 1.5 billion Muslim in the world have some radical ideas. We can't judge them all. This movie is true to the history and beginnings of Islam that I grew up hearing from my friends when I was a child. Very good movie. I will let my two daughters see it in a few years. Arabic version is even better. Uh, yeah, that I, I could imagine uh, that might be. I, I seriously, it's it's very, very impressive to make not just a three-hour movie but two of them at the same time with separate casts for and and it's you know it's the kind of thing where you know he he understood that he would greatly increase the audience if he made a version in English whilst also realizing that there are a lot of Muslims who would prefer to see it in Arabic and let's see. Right, this person points out Anthony Quinn gives one of his best performances. Absolutely true. He's amazing in this. Masterpiece brings tears of joy to my eyes. I can absolutely 
yeah, it's it's amazing. Excellent movie chronicling the beginnings of Islam from the time when the Prophet Muhammad first receives the message. Arabic version is more accurate, but the English version was made to be more accessible to a Western audience. Well worth a look for anyone interested in learning more about the history of one of the world's greatest religions. Let's see. Um, just showed this movie to my classes. I've watched uh, The Message countless times. It never gets old, never gets boring. It also most brilliantly condenses 23 years of the life of The Messenger into just under three hours. The historical inaccuracies engendered by this condensing are far, far outweighed by the holistic reflection of the origins of Islam that it achieves. It's amazing that filmographies of the great actor Anthony Quinn often ignore this. That Yeah, that is wild. Arguably his masterpiece, among great movies and Hollywood productions, this is perhaps the most ignored gem of all. Buy it, watch it, show it to your friends. Without a doubt, one of the best movies of the 20th century. Agreed. Let's see. The uh, crafty work on a religious film, wonderfully directed by Mustafa Akkad, praiseworthy performance from entire cast, especially Anthony Quinn. Uh, I truly respect uh, Quinn for portraying the role of uh, the uncle of the Holy Prophet. Uh, must watch for non-Muslims to understand Islam's real message, especially in today's era when the portrayal of Islam is so negatively depicted in the West. Islam is what is purely depicted in shape of this film. This film shows perfect art direction, and the music score of the film by Maurice Jara is pure piece of meditation, which was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Music Score. It really is excellent. One movie I recommend strongly for people seeking to understand the origins of Islam and its philosophy and how it was founded, much needed in the current Islamophobia times we live in. Watch it closely. Even minor details are based on facts straight from the books. One user who says, best movie I've ever seen. Seen it more than six times, I would definitely recommend it to non-Muslims as a foundation for their journey in learning about Islam. 100% agreed. Let's see. Right, and and yeah. Um, okay, one person wrote in their review: the battle scenes are not very well directed. Many shots show the hundreds of extras shuffling around or not acting in a way as fierce as you might expect. I I wish this person gave some time codes, though. I, I appreciate you know. I'm not going to pretend like I always give specific examples, but like, I don't know what he's talking about, or, or her, or them. I, I just got done rewatching it, and there's no, I, I don't see any shots like that in there. Let's see... I like that the movie took care of the fact that Muslims do believe that God also talked to Christ before he talked to Muhammad. That's one thing that Christians don't like at all. Muslims believe in it because Muhammad said so. You must see and enjoy because this is the real Islam, not ISIS and the fabrications of the West. And let's see. One person said, the film was also clearly made with a Muslim audience in mind. It was not overly accessible to someone who was not familiar with the story or characters. It took almost half of the film for me to figure out who all of the characters were, how they were connected. I mean, I... I most of my viewings of this film were long, long after having the the recency of the you know of of history class fresh in my mind so yeah that wasn't my experience at all i i didn't have trouble picking up on the but i suppose yeah you know if you if you already know the the characters and events you'll have an easier time and, and then he says, by the ending, it really felt like Lawrence of Arabia, but without the central character that the audience could connect to and rally around. And I, I can understand that. I, I, I'm probably not going to be saying very many positive things about Lawrence of Arabia. It's, it's one of those things where, like, 
guys, if you really, like, the Middle East is fascinating. There's a lot of incredible stories there. Why do you feel the need to put a white guy there just to have, like, why can't you just have Muslims tell their own stories? Why, why, do, why do you feel the need to insert yourself, insert someone who looks like you, just to tell, just, yeah. So, uh, yeah, done with uh, critic quotes. Ama the movie has amazing cinematography. Like, the desert looks stunning. And Bilal the, starts out a slave, and he's abused from as soon as we see him. Uh, let's see if I can find... Yes, so, so played by Johnny Seca, R.I.P. And the... Yeah, he's, he's done a bunch of other stuff. Um, yeah, not really anything I'm particularly familiar with, but, yeah, this was, this was far from the only thing that he, let, let's see, was that, 50, he appeared in 50 things total, uh, you know, movies, TV shows, and, and various, but, yeah, um, the, the, um, he, he delivers a really amazing performance, and his, journey is very like it's it's so heartening to see how like he goes from being this literal slave to being seen as one of one of the the brothers one uh, you know, a member of the brotherhood of islam you know not lesser but equal and just the look on his face when someone tells him you know I'm not going to give away exactly what they say, but basically, you know, they, they're encouraging him. And just, like, to the, the, the acceptance, the, the you know, his, his reaction to acceptance uh, is, is just amazing. Uh, right, I see the, the actor also appeared in Roots, so, you know, that is the thing, like, you know, people with skin quite that dark for a while you know if yeah they were they were more likely to get cast as slaves and such than you know which you know that's still like he you know he's still giving an excellent performance but it is it is too bad to to limit a talented actor uh, with with something like that now the i'm going to see if i can pronounce this correctly Hind, the the wife of Abu Sufyan, played by, uh, is this right? Irene Pappas, R.I.P. And yeah, she you know amazing. The it's wild. I feel like everything I've seen her in is stuff nobody else has seen. She's also really great in the Odyssey, uh, the the 1997 miniseries starring Armand Asante. Uh, you know, and yeah, she's she's she gave an incredible performance here, very very passionate and and just yeah, uh, you know, and and she's actually introduced using the fact that she's important to get them to lower prices, despite the fact that she's rich enough to afford full price. So we very quickly get a sense of who she is. Uh, we learn that a lot of young people join because of the. Pro progressive messages Muhammad is preaching and it is true the youth is frequently more progressive than older set in their ways conservatives we see a number of individuals convert and it's very clear why even some of the people who you know are very frustrated with Muhammad for the the you know trying to to bring about Islam they still have to admit they know he's a good person in at least one scene, someone is tortured, and rather than showing the torture itself too much, which you know, we can picture in our heads anyway, the editing cuts to people hearing the screams, and it's much more effective that way. And again, that's part of why it's PG. Like this, you could easily see how this could have been R-rated. Uh, some scenes that are very tense, as Muhammad and his followers, avoid the deadly religious persecution, as people did not have the right to freedom of religion at that time. 
see a lot of scenes of travel of people looking from Hamid, the early Muslims, and the persecution of them. It's very impressive that this does not end up re repetitive, tedious, and boring. It very easily could have. Now, I do have to say that Hind is definitely a misogynistic representation of a woman. She's depicted as being manipulative, bigoted, greedy, driven by self-interest, emasculating her husband. She has a real Lady Macbeth thing going on. And it is a problem because she is the most prominent female character, one of the only female characters at all. Like, there's, there are women in this film, but most of them are extras. So there isn't really a counter... And some people might watch this movie and think, oh, I guess all women are terrible, or, or all women who have privilege are terrible, and that's just not the truth, uh, you know. And I, I haven't read the original, you know, yeah, I haven't read the Quran, and I don't remember details enough. It is possible that the depiction of her is very accurate to the the original, you know, and, and, you know, the movie does also say, like, there are characters who say that women are m men's equals. And, you know, there's several, you know, things that are in favor of women. The, the movie features the call to prayer, but it's actually subtitled. I don't know that I've seen any other where the call to prayer is actually subtitled. It's almost never with subtitles. So if you don't speak the language, it doesn't sound like the, the um, you know, with the subtitles, you realize it is a, it's, it's a positive thing. It's not some like, um, I, let's see, I don't think it is, um, let's see, maybe, Lyrics in English. So the um, yeah, you know it's the the um, yeah. I'm I'm not gonna go word for word, but you know, God is great. I bear witness there is no God except the one God. Muhammad is the messenger of God. Hurry to the prayer. Hurry to salvation. There is no God except the one God. You know, like. If you heard a Christian say that in English, a like a lot of Christians, you know, okay, so obviously a couple of words would have to be all altered, obviously, but it doesn't sound scary. But there's a lot of American movies and TV shows where they'll just have it, you know, and, and they'll maybe even add like a slight filter, maybe a little echo to the voice, and it's like, <gasps> what is it? And it's like, it's not scary. It's not this weird you know, otherworldly thing, it's just, you know, the, in the movie, they, they outright say, you know, I mean, the Christians use a bell, should we use, no, I prefer that we use a verbal call to prayer, that's what, you know, that's what they settle on, but it's just, like, there's nothing, it's not scary, it's not some, some kind of, it's not a threat, you know, the way that it's so frequently in American movies and TV shows, they they act as though it is some, you know, and and yeah, it's because some people really benefit from there being hatred between the between Christians and Muslims. The movie shows the truth that the powerful, let's see, yeah, two two powerful people, equality is seen as dangerous, and the movie describes a just war. There's some great tense build-up to battle scenes. At one point, we see a substantial force move towards the camera, but at first, they don't take up much of the frame, and they get bigger and, you know, very, very nicely done. And the battle scenes are very easy to follow. There's phases to the battles. It's very easy to tell who is winning and why. You know, this was back when people knew how to do battle scenes in movies. It's not the, the kind of... There's still some really good ones recently, but there's a bunch of more recent movies that just have no idea how to handle it. Movies like this really thrive on having antagonists that the audience love to hate, and this does supply us with some really despicable ones. And the movie makes a case for Islam, not through fear or command, through appeals, by providing a list of things that Islam did better than the belief systems at the time. 
Now, I know some people will look at this movie and say, oh, it doesn't describe the way Muslims are today. I see it as aspirational, instructional, inspirational. You can take the values of this film and apply them to your own life, whether or not you're Muslim. Like, there's a number of values in this film that I, you know, I've, I've felt were, were true my whole life, so, such as the, the, you know, that women are equal to men, or they should be, you know, like the, the, the differences do not at all justify the, like, yeah, there's a little bit of physical difference, whatever, does not at all justify the fact that women have been second-class citizens for much of history throughout much of the world. And, yeah, you know, you can, you can watch this and it's like, oh, that's part of Islam too. You know, it's, it, the, the, yeah, you know, the, the, this is how we, stop all the the hatred is is we understand each other you know when when you watch this movie you understand why islam is so important to million you know, yeah i guess billions of people you know which is something that when you most american media you watch that talks about islam really doesn't give you a a good idea of that especially like some that's made very recently does a good job, but for decades, American media just hated Islam and refused to do any kind of, you know, so, so yeah, if everything, you know, if you only watch American media, if everything you hear about Islam is negative, and then you meet Muslims, instead of seeing their humanity, the, what it conjures up in your mind is all those negative things you've seen in, you know, various, yeah, in, in movies and TV. You know, you, you don't see their humanity, and that's when, that's where the problem is, you know. Now, and, and the movie shows Islam as a positive influence that had to fight for acceptance early on, but those who accept Islam have their lives changed for the better. Those who simply don't try to stop Islam, you know, they don't see as much positive change, but they do see some, and certainly they don't see negative change. It's only those who use violent tactics to stop Islam that really see their lives change for the worse. And if you consider Islam to be just, then this is a great way for things to go. And, you know, as someone who doesn't believe in Islam myself, I can definitely tell you this is the exact right way to appeal to those of us who don't believe. You know, if, if you align yourself with the ideals of justice, you know, yeah. And, yeah, it's not trying to scare people into believing as a lot of American media promoting conservative Christianity does. And, you know, some of that may be out of need. It was made by a Muslim American producing an English film meant to be distributed worldwide, not only in Muslim-friendly countries. So, you know, I'll grant that. And that's, you know, sometimes the best art comes out of limitations. You know, there's a lot of these old Christian movies where, like, you watch them and it's like, I mean, okay, you just, there's nothing here that's, you know, like, me personally, if the, the Charlton Heston Ten Commandments, if it wasn't so well made as a movie, like, if you just look at, like, the values that it, you know, yeah, who, who are the good guys, who are the bad guys and such, like, it doesn't necessarily, like, you know, yeah, for sure, the the Egyptians did some terrible things to the uh, Israelites, I guess they were called, because they weren't quite Jewish at the time, were they? Crap. I, I'm it's been a while since I, I I I'm forgetting the details. But yeah, the you know yeah, the Egyptians treat the, the you know, the Israelites terribly, but a lot of Christians treat you know not even you know, they treat Jews terribly, they treat Muslims terribly, they even treat other Christians terribly, you know, so it's like, I'm sorry, what is, like, yeah, I want the Egyptians to stop having slaves, but, like, you know, I, I forget, yeah, I believe, I believe Charlton Heston is one of the, the people who 
said that, or am I thinking of John Wayne? At least one of them said things that were like, you know, oh, was slavery really that bad? Yes, yes it was. Shut up. You know, the, the, if not for how well made that movie is, it, it, I wouldn't, you know, it, it would just be like, okay, so this is what Christians, I don't know, believe, but certainly what they're taught is, is the, the case. You know, it's, it's the kind of thing where it's like, if you believe that slavery is bad, why do you support it so much? Why, like, there's so many conservatives who to this day think that black people should be slaves, that black people shouldn't have equal rights, you know. Anyway, this film was made under the, the, the circumstances where basically a cod knew this has to not put off the the it, it has to justify itself it has to make a a case for itself and yeah it's it's like you know i've i've watched i've probably watched um 10 commandments more times but i've also had that one for longer um and yeah just the the it's it's a lot you know a lot of christian media that's like explicitly, you know, it's very much preaching to the choir. It's not trying to appeal to someone who doesn't already believe 100%. It's just like an, an echo chamber. They're just, it's just stuff you already learnt in church or Sunday school. And now there's, you know, now it's in a live action movie instead of, you know, just being read aloud or something. And that's where I think this movie, the message, is just much more interesting. There. Now, the the DVD comes with a uh, uh, documentary about the. So I took some notes from that. They couldn't film in actual Mecca since that now has skyscrapers, unlike old Mecca. So a lot of where the film was shot was built as a set from the ground up, which is holy crap! Like when you see the scope of this film. The fact that a lot of it was built from the ground, just very, very impressive. Not that much is known about what things looked like back then, so the production designer had to use his imagination after doing the research he was able to. The movie wasn't technically made by Hollywood, but it was made with the techniques of Hollywood. It was important to the costume designer that the cast felt comfortable in the costume so that it wouldn't distract them from acting. I agree, and yeah, they did a really solid job. It took months to train the horses, but the ones they used were already used to a hard day's work. Now, that... Yeah, the movie gets you interested from right away, and you very quickly get an idea of, like, what yeah, what it's about, and the tone and such. I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending fits with what came before. Yeah, the ending is absolutely excellent. Um... And, yeah, so this does not have a post credit scene or anything of that sort, but it is the rare movie where I would actually say it's worth sitting through the end credits, uh, even though there isn't anything after, because there's this great montage of these beautiful, you know, buildings that were made by Muslims that, you know, it's... it's, it's the movie itself is about the early days of, of Islam, but the ending, you know, the, the, let's see, I guess it would be around 1300 years between the, the events of the movie and the release of the movie, so, something like that. And in that time, you know, there's a lot of territory that Islam has had, and yeah, the, the end credits have this beautiful montage of just, like, even if, tell you what, if you... If you can't respect anything else about Islam, I, I think you should. But if you if you can look at these and not consider them beautiful, like I don't even I'm I'm not usually like into architecture, but it's just it's stunning looking, just amazing. And right, so I've already talked about some of the characters. Um, I wanted to also make sure to mention 
so so yeah, I, I believe I've mentioned Abu Sofyan. I forget if I've mentioned he's played by Michael Ansara, R.I.P. And yeah, I'm not sure I really know much. Oh, he did the voice of Mr. Freeze for Batman the Animated Series and a bunch of stuff since. And oh, he was on both Deep Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Star Trek Voyager. Ah, yeah, it's been a little while since I looked up this this stuff. So yeah, I'm yeah some some stuff that yeah wow he was he was prolific 199 roles but yeah some of that is like voiceover for you know, uh, voice acting for video games and and animated stuff and such but yeah very very oh and he actually he played the ancient one in the 1978 Doctor Strange the the I believe it was it was like a failed TV pilot but yeah um. Is it anyone I remember? Okay, he played Kang and Jayal. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. In incredibly talented actor. Very intense. And just... Yeah, the... the um, like, the, the, the character is more complex than you might at first think. And Ansara incredible job like he really absolutely nails it uh, you know every step of the way I completely believe the the character and I I talked a little about Anthony Quinn RIP I have to admit I'm not familiar with him from a lot of these let's see yeah so so it's it's this line of the desert oh he is in Orleans of Arabia I forgot about that that's been a while since I watched that he played Zeus in Hercules the Legendary Journeys. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I vaguely remember that. Holy crap. It's been many, many years since I watched that. But yeah, just incredibly talented actor and you know, he he sometimes served as this sort of you know, he could like he he was he was born in Mexico and yeah, you know, like he, you know, he spoke fluent English in, in a lot of his movies, and he's, you know, a lot of white Americans don't find him, like, threatening looking the way that, you know, like, completely black actors, uh, you know, especially back then, but sadly still a lot. So he got, you know, he could play roles that, you know, yeah, you know, a lot of white Hollywood were more okay with uh, that kind of thing than from from him than from uh, you know which yeah I'm I'm really really glad that we were not stuck with some like straight up pasty white dude with like you know brown uh, you know yeah. Where they where they make his face browner or, or black with with some kind of you know that's just yeah I'm um if I never see another movie that does that I that I will be very happy now let's see right so yeah the acting consists only of top notch performances characters are credible and interesting. And, uh, right, I got some IMDb trivia. Muhammad Ali expressed interest in playing the role of Bilal. Producer Mustafa Akkad refused, stating such casting would smack of commercialism. And, I, you know, I kind of, I, I think his heart was in, Muhammad Ali's heart was in the right place. But, yeah, it would have felt like, it would have felt like stunt casting. I actually don't even know, Muhammad Ali... Was he? Did he act? I I forget. Like he was the boxer. But but yeah, you know, like this. I I believe this was after he converted to Islam. So of course, Bilal, who is a you know historical character, they didn't make him up for this film. You know that would have been. He he would have really loved to to bring that character to life. You can completely understand that. But but yeah, I. 
I think it would have been very distracting. I, I'm with a card on that one. It it just yeah. And let's see. Yes, in accordance with Muslim beliefs, Muhammad could not be depicted on screen, nor could his voice be heard. This rule extended to his wives, his daughters, and his sons-in-law. This left Muhammad's uncle as the central character. In the completed film, actors speak directly to the camera and then nod to unheard dialogue. I, I have to admit, there was like the first time I watched it, there was one point where I was like, "Oh no, are they gonna? Are they gonna like?" move the camera side to side to mimic him shaking his head or something. Thankfully, they don't. And that's the, you know, it could definitely have, you know, even if you think that it's difficult to relate because he's just a POV, think about, imagine if that was the case. And this was one of Anthony Quinn's favorite films of his own. Uh, Mustafa Khat also filmed an Arabic version of the film in which Muna Wasif played Hind, simultaneously with, with an Arab cast for Arabic-speaking audiences. He felt that dubbing the English version into Arabic would not be enough because the Arabic acting style differs significantly from that of Hollywood. The actors took turns doing the English and Arabic versions in each scene, and both are now sold together on some DVDs. I wish I had uh, the the set that has both. I, I would love to, to watch it and compare the acting style. But, yeah. Sadly not and and honestly that i feel like that does almost kind of help prove that like you know cuz like the the movie it was sold here in denmark you know but they didn't want to put the arabic version on even even if they also had the english language one now uh, all actors were paid an additional 25% of their salaries in libyan pounds which most of them hurriedly spent prior to leaving the country as they didn't think the currency would be accepted anywhere else. And the film is dubbed into 12 languages. Mustafa Akkad filmed for six months in Morocco, but had to stop when the Saudi government exerted great pressure on the Moroccan government to stop the project. And the cast and crew consisted of 28 nationalities and cultures. Mustafa Akkad felt it really proved that different people can work together towards a common goal and succeed. And yeah, he's absolutely right. And 300 of the extras also helped with the construction of the sets, which, you know, makes a lot of sense. You know, make, make yourself as useful as, you, useful as you can. And yeah, you know, the... Because the, they're not doing the same... They're not doing both of those things at the same time. They have to construct sets before they start filming. So, you know, you go from from doing one of those things to, to another, so, yeah. And Michael Forrest got cast out of pure chance while leaving his ex-wife's house in the Hollywood Hills. Forrest encountered Andrew Martin, who happened to be driving by. Martin uh, pulled over, asked him if he'd like to do a project in Africa with the Arabs. Forrest was quickly cast in a much larger role but found the smaller role of Khalid much more interesting, plus the large gaps in his character's shooting schedule allowed him to periodically return to Rome to do voice dubbing work while the rest of the cast had to stay in Morocco and Libya for a full year. For almost all of his lines, Michael Forrest is dubbed by a British actor to hide his American accent. This is highly ironic because Forrest was also a very acting, active dubbing act, voice actor at the time. Libyan regular army were used for the battle. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, for, for some battle. Shot in the Sahara versus mere extras, which, yeah. At its initial release, this movie was banned from many Middle Eastern countries because the religious leaders didn't like the idea of having the Prophet Muhammad's story being made into a motion picture. And I completely respect that. Let's see. A number of roles are revoiced by British actors. They include, among others, Lawrence Payne, David Kaiser, Cyril Shapps, Robert Rieti in both major and minor roles. Mustafa Akkad had to go outside the United States in order to raise the production money needed for. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, I might have said earlier that the money was American. I'm, I, yeah, thinking about it, it might not have been. Anyway. 
let's see. Anthony Quinn wanted his personal friend Marisa Mel to be his co-star. Negotiations fell through. The producers thought that Mel wasn't bankable anymore. Not a big enough name, so they cast Irene Pappas instead. Let's see. Right, and uh, yes, uh, critic quote. Great, better than many Christian films of similar theme. Let's see. Firstly, please note that this is mostly a review of the English version of the film, because ladies and gentlemen, the maker of this movie shot it twice, once with Arabic actors, once with English-speaking actors. That is the kind of dedication that was put into this project. From the start of the film, there is a note that Al-Azhar University approves the historical value of the movie. People took this job seriously, and it shows in the final product. I expect the film to be in Arabic with English subtitles, and was disappointed to see a large amount of exceeding white Arabs in the main role, but that did not detract from the quality of the film or its message. The English-speaking actors are not well known, but all give good performances. There's a certain Greek actress, Irene Pappas, who plays the wife of one of the tribe leaders, and she is something fierce. She has a beautiful, wrathful gaze, and with those acting skills and face, her name should really be bigger in the West. I eventually briefly viewed the Arabic version of the film, and it looks of equal quality. The, act the acting is different, but still good. And, yeah, excellent description of Irene Papa's, and it really is wild that she's not, that she didn't, you know, yeah, wasn't a, a way bigger deal. Now, that brings us... So yeah, the, the dialogue, you know, there's 13 entries in the IMDb quote section, and all of them are good. Uh, let's see. And yeah, the, the um, that brings us to the editing, which is really, really good. Like, I... There's, there's one part where someone is being tortured, and we'll see, like... The, the I'm not going to give away what, ex what exactly happens, but the instrument of torture we see like getting really close to the person and then it cuts away. And, you know, it might in part have been because, you know, the, the special effects, you know, maybe they couldn't have, you know, yeah, because of the time, you know, in, in yeah, 1976 special effects, especially for the kind of like bodily harm were nothing compared to what they are today. You know, it was really the the yeah. You know, one of one of the things that made the the whole you know the the very first which was in nineteen eighty the very first Friday the Thirteenth really helped usher in the the age of you know practical effects that make it look like someone has actually been like stabbed or, or such and yeah but anyway it might be partially in because of that but it was the exact right choice it, it's incredibly effective and there's a lot of that there's a lot of editing where they'll just like yeah it's 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 very very effective um now the Let's see. So this was um, okay. The it was estimated that the budget was ten million dollars. Um, is there really not anything about what it made? Um. Okay, uh, this says it was $17 million, and the box office was $5 million. And, you know, for sure, like, it, of course, ran into the, the problem of, you know, a lot of people just don't want any of the, the you know, they don't want to hear it at all. But, yeah, it was, it was filmed in Morocco and Libya, and the just amazing... They really got a lot out of the the, the location shooting, and uh, okay, it seems to be fine. Let's 
see. Right, and the, the yeah, um, costumes. I have a critic quote. The costumes are detailed. All things exude a certain atmosphere of credibility and respect for the history and for the religion, those who believe in Muhammad's message. And, yeah, so it's not like an action movie, but the, the battles are very impressive, you know, chases on foot and on horseback and people attack each other, you know, on foot, on, on horseback and such. And, you know, not only the good guys, but also the bad guys fight with smart tactics, which is, of course, harder to choreograph, but also much more satisfying both to choreograph and to watch. And, yeah, very, very impressive. I, I really, I, I have a lot of respect for anyone who's willing to show the positives of someone that they clearly, you know, obviously they don't, you know, the people working on this don't think that, like, the stuff that was done to Muhammad by the polytheistic pre-Islamic Arabs, you know, that that was at all okay, you know, and, you know, yeah, back then, if you, if you look, there, there was a lot of really horrible stuff that was done back then, uh, you know, any, any, whenever I see people here in the West, uh, you know, make arguments in support of fascism, I just, it's, just, just educate yourself, look at how much horrible stuff happened before democracy, like, there's so many awful things that democracy at least attempts to make illegal, make, you know, punishable. And, yeah, the, the fact that this movie actually shows them, you know, having good tactics. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of American movies where they're like, nope, if they're not, if there are enemies, they have terrible tactics. So it doesn't matter, you know, what the reality is. No, everyone who fights America must have terrible tactics. And it's just, like, it's, it's ridiculous. Now, that brings us to the score. And I just realized that I have been neglecting something that I meant to do. So let me real quick try to... Yes, so... The cinematography was by Jack Hilljard, R.I.P. He had 68 uh, credits as cinematographer. The last was in 85, and the first was in 44. That's quite... Yeah, cinematography changed a lot over that time. It's very impressive that he was able to keep up. The editing was handled by John Bloom, and let's see, um, hmm, he might have retired, the last thing I see from him is from 2011, which, fair enough, he's from 1935, so, yeah, makes sense to, he has 53 credits as editor in total, as far back as 61, so covering 50 years. The music was handled by Maurice Jarre, RIP, and he composed for 177, you know, different things. The last one was in 2003, and the first was in 52, so yeah, that's, yeah. And, let's see, the, yes, um, I, th yeah, the, the, I believe this is from my own old review, the score is marvelously composed, epic, sweeping, in the style of Middle Eastern music, and, let's see, critic quote, with a low budget and humble resources, this movie is epic in many ways, whether you're a Muslim or not, it is a must-see for those who love historical films. As a Muslim, it makes me cry every time, especially with its haunting soundtrack, and yeah, 100% understand, it's really, really, yeah, absolutely amazing, like, this is the kind of thing where I would pay to own the soundtrack, I would listen to the soundtrack without watching the movie, it's, it's amazing. And, let's see, 
Let's see. Uh, yeah, and I believe this is also from my old review. The pacing is good, coming in at not much short of three full hours. It doesn't overstay its welcome or dwell unnecessarily. Yeah, it's two hours and 51 minutes, uh, you know, and that is, well, yeah, that is counting the, the end credits. If you don't count that, I think it's just a few minutes less than that. And... Yeah, and it's the kind of, it's I think if you watch the first 35 minutes you should have an idea of whether or not you'll want to keep watching. And yeah, the best element of the film is its ability to bridge the gap between Christians and Muslims and just how well made it is. The worst aspect is probably the the character of Hind and I should say it's not that there's nothing it's just that a lot of the time it's very very aggressively like misogynistic and yeah but you know she is one of those characters that eventually you do see no there's actually there is some good to, to her and yeah so the the Probably the the thing I was most worried about before I watched it was that it would be over long, and that absolutely is not. What I I don't even like. Usually, when when a movie is like, you know, near three hours, I can point to something and say, eh, I think you should have cut that. I don't. I'm not sure what. I don't. I can't really point to anything in this and say I think that should have been cut. And uh, let's see, yeah, the thing I was, the couple of things I was most looking forward to was Quinn's acting, since I already knew him, and Akkad, seeing Akkad as a director. Uh, you know, the, the, um, just, yeah, the, the, um, he, he did such a phenomenal job as a producer that it's, yeah, it's, it's wild that, that, Legitimate, yeah, yeah, let's see, the, um, he is, yeah, he produced 14 things, and yeah, most of them are Halloween movies, he was still photographer on Halloween, TV movie called A Cut Above the Rest. Yeah, it's like a, a documentary. Oh, yeah, because, like, I'm guessing, yeah, he took stills when they were making it, and then they used those stills for the movie, and that's why he's credited. But, yeah, um... Oh, that's right. Yeah, actually, it is kind of... Other than the Halloween movies, and then, you know, the, the three movies he directed... Let's see, he produced something called Free Ride from 86, which, yeah, very much sounds like a teen comedy from 86, and an 85 movie called Appointment with Fear, where, let's see, yeah, it's about, you know, there's an ancient Egyptian curse, astral projection, and just, yeah. You know the the you can you can see how yeah I gotta say free ride is a bit of a it, it's different from from the rest but appointment with fear like it's not John Carpenter but you could see how the the you know it could easily have been like the kind of thing that he would be involved in now the that brings us to right so yeah the um trailers for this do give at least a little too much away but it is also difficult to you know some of the most dramatic stuff happens fairly late in the story so you know yeah you can understand why they spoiled the cover and poster do not give too much away but do give a decent idea of what the the movie is like honestly i would say the you know i would i would recommend looking up the the um what's it called oh imdb changed again for the worse 
again. Now I struggle to get the the thing to. Sh okay, here we go. Oh. Okay, yes, um, there are several posters, and I, in my opinion, they're worth looking up on IMDb. Really, really impressive. And let's see them. Yes, that brings us to Rotten Tomatoes, where it doesn't even have a critic rating because there's only three reviews. All three of them are, um, what's the word? The, um, ah, fresh. They're all fresh. And the, the audience score, based on over 5,000 ratings, is 92%. The average rating is 4.5 out of 5. And... Right, it's not on Metacritic at all, and on IMDb it has an overall rating of 8.1 out of 10, based on 49,000 votes. 50.3% of the votes are 10s, and it's it's honestly not hard to see why. 13.8% uh, gave it 9, 13.7% gave it 8, 8.4% gave it 7, 4.4 gave it 6. 4.3 gave it 1. To each their own, but I honestly have a hard time. Like, I don't even know how you give it that. Like, it's possible that not all of them are, like, people who hate Islam. A chunk of them might be Muslims who either on principle don't think that you should make a movie out of Muhammad's life or have been misled into thinking that it actually that you can see or hear Muhammad in the movie. It's, I, I have a hard time believing that very many people would watch this whole thing and give it a one out of ten. That feels completely out of anyway. Um, Two point four percent gave it five. One point one percent gave it four. Zero point eight percent gave it three, and another zero point eight percent gave it two. And on IMDb, there are 172 user reviews, or 138, without spoilers. And let's see. So, it, yeah, and I, I read all of them. You know, normally I just read the top voted 100, but, yeah, that, that few I can easily read. Um, make time to read. Nobody gave it a 1 out of 10. One person gave it a 2 out of 10. Right, I should specify, these are the top 100, the, the 100 that were voted most useful. 1 gave it 2 out of 10, 7 gave it 3, 2 gave it 4, 4 gave it 5, 6 gave it 6, 7 gave it 7, 16 gave it 8, 13 gave it 9, and a hundred oh that, and 108 gave it 10. Right, that is all 172 that I counted there. So yeah, that's pretty significant, very, very popular uh, you know, yeah, and there are only 21 links in the IMDb external review section, which is just way too little for something so impressive. And the let's see, right, it was nominated. Maurice Jarry was nominated for best music original score for an Oscar, but did not, as far as I can tell, did not end up winning. And let's see. Right. So briefly on the on the special effects, I think they, you know, the special effects are good for their time. It's not one of those cases where they hold up like badly, but it's also like it's not. You know, if if you if you're very used to special effects the way they look today, you know this is not going to be very impressive for you but you know when this was made a char you know if a character is killed by a sword you know the the you'll the the killer will be facing the camera not not looking into it but like in the direction of and the the other person will be facing the killer 
and the killer will like slash with a sword and the moment they slash the other the the victim turns around and then you see the blood and it's like you know if you know anything about filmmaking yeah the blood was already there you know the the person just had to pretend like the blood only just appeared right before you know it's not amazing but it does get the job done i really appreciate it. you know this is one of those movies where they realize okay we're not going to make it look any better than this so let's just do, let's focus on making this as good as possible instead of trying to do something that's just not going to to happen you know there's a lot of movies from the 70s that don't you know and and this actually yeah um some months ago i talked about the original i guess both both of the old um I can't believe i'm blanking on the the French Connection movies, which are from 71 and 75, and this is from 76. In those, I noticed, and, and talked about in the review, you know, the blood looked very, the blood looked like red paint, you know. That wasn't really something that I noticed on this one. I guess maybe the camera didn't rest on it as much, uh, you know, and, and it also, it doesn't look as bad when it's like on clothing. It looks bad when you put it on someone's face. It doesn't look like that came from the person. And that was something, you know, there's scenes in French Connection where someone is punched and we're supposed to believe that they're bleeding. And, you know, I appreciate, like, they were trying to, to bring a, a level of grit to, to American movies that was not common. That I greatly appreciate. I just wish the blood had looked better. And, I, you know, I, in that I found it distracting. I didn't find it distracting here. And let's see. Yeah, you know, basically it was it was in the eighties when blood st stopped looking like watered down red paint. And yeah, there's some very impressive stunts in battles and such. And the amount of violence is appropriate. It gets very unpleasant, but never exploitative. It doesn't wallow in blood or misery. And, yeah, I suppose I will just briefly talk about, you know, it's not particular, like, there's not, like, a lot of sexuality, or there's, there's some suggestive dancing scenes, but that's basically it. Um, let's see, there's a little bit of profanity. Um, yeah, not really alcohol, drugs, or smoking. So, that, yeah, the, the the IMDb Parents Guide notes that the violence on gore is moderate and the frightening and intense scenes are mild. And, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Honestly, they do, um, yeah, there's some, there's some details in the Parents Guide. They try to keep it without spoiler, and they do a pretty good job. Yeah. Uh, if you want more detail than what I've just gone into, I recommend going there. And I'm not going to say it because a number of the... I, I don't think everyone watching just the review will want to know further details. Now, yeah, so the, the DVD that I have comes with a 45-minute documentary, which is very informational. You learn a lot about how they made the movie. It focuses on the movie doesn't express hostility towards Islam, despite clearly being made by native English speakers who are taught in school that Muslims are a threat to Christianity, rather than that they can find common ground work together, since most just want to live their normal lives. Uh, there's also the three-and-a-half-minute trailer on the DVD, and... Yeah, like, you know, if, if you're, if it's not, like, ridiculously expensive, I, I recommend buying the, the DVD. I'm very happy that I own it. I've watched both the movie and the, the behind the scenes multiple times, and, yeah, very, very happy to. And it's, it's the kind of thing, you know, I suppose not everyone will watch this movie more than once, but I suspect quite a significant chunk of the people who watch it will. So, um, yeah, this is, this movie's a 10 out of 10. It's very rare for me to give 10 out of 10 ratings, but absolutely. And, um, I mean, I wouldn't rule out watching at least some of it again later today. Um, 100% I'm going to be watching it again. Maybe, 
I doubt it'll be more than a couple of months before I watch it again. And yeah, the movie absolutely holds up. It is it's one of those that have aged really really well. And I hope that in the future, you know, even more people will will realize like you know, I've I've mentioned a lot of people, a lot of the people who have found this movie have expressed that they absolutely love it. But I I I hope that in the future way more people become aware that it exists. You know, the the uh, so yeah, the, there are 49,000 votes for this movie from 1976. The first Halloween, two years later, same producer, 290,000 votes. So, you know, yeah. It's, it's, it's a... Yeah. There's a, there's a really, really huge discrepancy there that... You know, honestly, I I think I can think of more people, like, you know, I, w I would say the message is a movie that you can show much, show way more people than the first Halloween. You know, and I realize the first Halloween, by today's standards, is tame compared to a lot of other horror movies, but you know, you could you could understand why, you know, but but anyway, yeah, um, and. Yeah, that is it for the review itself. So from here on out, there's going to be spoilers. And I don't know how much what I'm going to say even will make sense to people who haven't watched it. So yeah, spoilers for the rest of the video. Notes taken while watching is the first section. So yeah, we see Bilal whipped for refusing to whip the other guy. They even put a rock on Bilal's chest for refusing the cruelty that they themselves indulge in and encourage. And, like, I know a fair bit about special effects. Almost 100%. The rock they put on him, like, when they were making the movie, that's not a rock that's, like, you know... So it, it's, a, it's a material that can be painted to look like a heavy rock, but in reality is not, you know, the same way that they'll do, like, fake bricks and such. It's really just the acting and the the cinematography and editing of, you know, they, they, they pretend that it's really heavy and they drop it on his chest, and he has to, like, pretend like the thing that was just put on his chest is actually extremely heavy. They're not going to do that to an actor. You know, the... the yeah, um, really, really compelling, convincing. And when the early converts go out and spread the word um, to the public, they're attacked. When Hamza shows up and says, if you want to fight, you can fight me, then they leave. They didn't want a fair fight. And great montage as they build Muhammad's house, and it is very admirable that he helped build it. And I really love when Muhammad and his forces win, Hamza, relaying who Muhammad, demands that the prisoners are equal to the Muslims, and any of them, if they teach ten Muslims to read, will be free. Great build-up to Hamza being attacked by a spear, Bo Saifa's wife expressing her hatred. You know, you have the, the, the yeah, just like Marine Papa's, like, I wish it wasn't so misogynistic, but holy crap, this woman, like could act like the the just just her delivery you know it's not enough to to kill him i want his blood and all this is holy crap just in, incredibly intense and you know they're they're having this party and you know the the slave like throws the spear through the you know the the dancer has this like ring thing on her head and he throws it right through you know she's seeing something that's basically you know it's there for entertainment you know it's just it's leisure, but she thinks of it as a weapon. She thinks, this is something I can use to get revenge. You know, very telling how people perceive things. And, uh, yeah, very dramatic when Hamza dies. Very, very, like, yeah. And, right, right, and, um, I th uh, wait, did I end up copying that in? I might have copied that in. Just gonna make sure if Yes. Um, 
yeah, uh, according to IMDb trivia, uh, you know, the top build, Anthony Quinn turns up 41 minutes in, is killed 50 minutes before the end of the film, not counting an end, un end titles footage. It is pretty wild, uh, you know, that's, yeah, that's a significant amount of the film that he's not in. Um, right. so, yes, so the... Um, yeah, and, and Hind is very brutal with Hamza's body. And very compelling when... Um, I'm going to need the name again. Let's see. Abu Sofyan is abandoned by everyone. And... I, I really appreciate that, you know, there's, there's a lot of movies where it would have ended in yet another big battle, in a third big battle, but it actually, you know, yeah, instead it ends with a truce because neither side particularly want for this to, you know, yeah, they're not, they're not interested in more bloodshed. And let's see, I guess... Yeah, I'll go ahead and do note. So, the final section, notes taken before watching. Um, yeah, one critic note. The resilience and common beliefs of Christianity are also resembled in the movie with the character of Christian Farmer, who healed injured Muhammad in Taif, and the Abyssinia king, Christian king al-Najashi, who give asylum to the Muslim migrants. And let's see, and... Right, and I think the following is from, maybe from the, the documentary. They, of course, worked carefully to make sure that the fight scenes did not result in anyone actually being injured. And, yeah, um, that's it for, for this video. So, yeah, I, I really hope that this has helped open some hearts and minds to... A religion that you've been told a lot of lies about you know and I guess I'll just I'll say it just so that someone isn't gonna get me and come at me in the com comments about this no I'm not saying all Christians are bad people I'm saying there's already so many people who say that Christian that being a Christian means you're automatically good and there's way too few people being believed when they point out that there's many wonderful Muslims, you know, and, you know, straight cis white guy here hoping that some people will listen to the, to me saying it even, you know, I don't, I don't think it should be necessary. I think we should just listen to Muslims, but you know, I, I do acknowledge a number of people, you know, like, there's there's a lot of, of Muslims who can convey it really well, who just don't get to be put on TV the, the way that a lot of Christians will. You know, and then occasionally you'll have something absolutely hilarious, like, ah, what was his name again? Um, let's see, he, uh... Um, uh, um, hmm. Ah, crap. I can't seem to find his name. Um, but there was that, there, there was, um, you know, he, he wasn't hiding that he's Muslim, but he wrote a book about Jesus, and Fox News called him on and were like, how dare you write, you know, and he's like, because I researched him. And they just had nothing to, you know, so they, they keep trying to embarrass him, and he just responds very calmly, and they come out looking terrible. And, you know, the guy ended up going, you know, he, was, he went on Young Turks, you know, back when they were credible afterwards and you know didn't did he end up getting like of a, a show and I think he did end up doing something kind of messed up that he ended up kind of disgraced over gah I cannot remember his name I'll I'll try to I'll try to find it afterwards I'm not gonna 
waste your time by adding, making the recording longer as I just Google, but I'll try to find the name and put it in the in the description box afterwards. But yeah, um, that is it for this one.